What's up, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Danny Brown on The Deal. Season three, we've made it this far. Thank you for your support. We've been charting on Apple top 100 in like 50 countries, which is amazing, and 47 states, so thank you. Today, season three, launching with Cindy Amuel. Cindy Amuel is a powerhouse broker, one of the top luxury brokers in the world. She's a good friend of mine. We know each other personally and professionally. She also has seven kids, seven sons, who are all Division One kind of pro, pro prospect type kids. I've been living my life uh, vicariously through them, going to a lot of games. And her husband, Don, is one of the biggest soap stars uh, in the world. You can always find Cindy on Instagram, at Cindy Ambuel, spelled A-M-B-U-E-H-L, the Cindy Ambuel Group at Compass. This is a really fun episode uh, about balance, work life, family, career balance, uh, a lot of advice for women uh, who are going through it, but really for everyone. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did and hope everyone's safe out there and looking forward to season three. Thanks. Hey, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Deal with Danny Brown, season three, and I have a special guest to blow up season three, Cindy Anvil, a good friend of mine. How are you? Hey, Danny Brown. So happy to be here. I'm so thrilled to have you. I've wanted you on the show since uh, we launched this, and I'm so glad to lock you down for a few minutes. Uh, we know each other both professionally and personally, so we're going to get into a lot of good stuff. But for those that don't know Cindy, she is a fellow uh, broker, one of the top brokers in L.A. And um, what's interesting about Cindy, and there's a lot of things, I say don't judge a book by its cover because you look like a supermodel. Uh, you got, <laughs> and, you know, and that's why we're friends, Danny. Right yeah. there. You look like a supermodel. You're like a runway model, yet you have a power broker business, one of the top agents in the country. And what people probably don't know, and we're going to get into it, is you also run a very hectic family household. You have a, su a husband uh, who's one of the most famous actors, soap uh, actors in the world, yet you call him the sign bitch. So in, at home, he's the sign bitch. Everywhere else, he's world famous. Uh, but also, you have a very regular, I don't want to say regular, but semi-regular family structure, sort of. Like, it's the modern Brady Bunch with a lot of boys, and we're going to get into that. So I don't know where to start this because there's so many directions to go in, but why don't we just start about how many children do you have? Let's start there because this is a very unique part of your story. Well, we have uh, a total of seven boys. We've raised seven boys. Um, our oh. oldest is actually uh, Donald's nephew. His sister passed young and we took Drew in when he was 13. And, uh, and then we have now a 31-year-old, 29, 25, got to get them all straight, 19, and the twins that are 17. So you sure you're there's there any missing? The babies that are 17. There's no, none missing? You didn't miss one or two in there? You don't, maybe there's... Four, Santa, Alexander, Luca, Anton, and Davis. Oh, yes, and Donald. And Donald, who's the biggest boy of all. Yes, he makes it. All right, Biatch. So, so re remind me of the structure. So, you, so your nephew, you guys adopted. Then Donald had brought, before he married you, he had a, three, four sons already? <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's the Brady Bunch. Yeah, and so he had been married for a New York minute. She came with two, they had two, he got all four, we had two. It's just, it's a his, mine, and ours. But it. I didn't realize that part. I learned, learned that. I didn't know she had two, his ex had two, then they had two, and then you had two from a previous marriage. And so, That's the well, well, yes and no. So it's, wow, that's really complicated. <laughs> 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 it's really crazy when I hear it, Danny, to be honest with you. You've known me, you know, a long time. And it's crazy because when we look at these boys, all of them, they're our boys. Of course. I don't care where they came from. I don't care who they came from. Absolutely. Um, they're that. our boys. We're mom and dad. We're a family. Those boys would never say half brother. They would never say step brother. They're brothers. And right. they truly awesome. are are bound one another they're united and they truly have each other's back well i will also say that's how it's perceived i mean i didn't even know this about kids coming from different parents till after knowing you for several years i always just yeah. thought wow 
Don and Cindy got busy, man. Seven kids. That's <laughs> a long time. That girl. Yeah, they, 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 start, that girl. they started at 15, first kid in high school, <laughs> and they just kept down the line. Well, from the outside, it, I mean, it's really special and amazing because they everyone does seem like a, it is a family unit, and that's rare. And that's, well, it's even that's, more special and amazing from the inside. That's yeah. a testament to you and Don and values, which is another theme that we'll get into because for being right. such a high-profile couple and for Don being a celebrity, you guys are such down-to-earth, regular people from the outside, someone that knows you. No one would, you wouldn't know that unless someone told you. But let's let's get past. I just wanted to ask that one question because it was so interesting about the kids. But let's get into the Cindy Ambul story, the pre-real estate. Now you're a big real estate uh, mocker. We know that. But you had a huge career. Not only do you look like a supermodel, you were a model and an actress. Uh, you had a, you were on Seinfeld and Jag and had some legendary roles. So why don't you kind of go back to the beginning and tell us like where you grew up and what led you to your career into acting first? So I grew up in Orange County, phenomenal parents. They met when my mom was 16, um, fell madly in love, got married as soon as she graduated. And um, I was raised by just the most loving, wonderful family. It was great. And I wanted to go to college. My father was a police officer. My mom stayed home. They really couldn't afford much. So I modeled my way through business and math school. So it was great. And so I ended up, you know, this is, I'm dating myself, Danny, because uh, this is pre like the convenience of a computer. And I would be on planes going to Europe. I'd be going to Italy and, and Germany, and I would be doing campaigns there while I was doing my probability and statistics on the plane by longhand, you know, no computer, no, no I was actually writing computer, um, we had a, we had to write our own computer data, you know, at the time, it wasn't as nearly as convenient as it is now. And, um, what a and time. I just, I modeled my way through college. Wow. and got my degree and then when i went to, which was in probability and statistics with a minor of marketing and advertising and i thought well okay that's what i meant to do i went to do job interviews for it i'm like i will be so bored i will never want to do this and i just made way more money modeling part-time and just shooting commercials part-time putting myself through college than what they're offering me on salary for these jobs so i thought well i'll just keep doing what i'm doing for a year and then I'll get a real job, Got it. a real job. And, uh, and I ended up booking, um, you know, Seinfeld and Frasier and Wings and shows with Jimmy Burroughs, Men Behaving Badly. And I kind of had a knack for comedy, you know, and I still do. I take everything pretty lightly, but um, I had a knack for comedy and I was really lucky because that era was all sitcom. Four camera shoot sitcoms with friends and all of those shows, you know, that was, that's what we did and it was so fun and i think um i think that really prepared me for this business i i really do because you got you have to go with the flow and there are times when you're so busy and i'd be shooting three or four series at a time i was under contract for like two wow. i had pacific blue here something with jack scalia in jacksonville florida and then something else with db sweeney in vancouver and i'd be flying to all three so, and then I would go without without working for a few months. So I think that kind of prepped uh, me for this business where we're super, super, super busy and you're only as good as your next job, right? Your right. next thing. So and you it just, all collapses and you have nothing to do for two months. You so, just you just have to have faith that it comes back around. Yeah. Well, let me rewind back into before we get ahead of ourselves. So you're in school, you're in college. I imagine you were probably decent looking in college. You are modeling on planes, doing math statistics. You're like on <laughs> PWA with your textbook because there was no computers. Yeah, I literally like all the other and, models, all the other models, and the girls. We would be shooting campaigns and all over the Virgin Islands and all over the place. You and have your they calculator and textbooks, and you're doing equations. I would literally have my textbook. I would have my backpack. I'd bring all my textbooks with me. I'd be sitting in first class because they would fly us first class. It was there you are. First pretty class sweet. doing statistics. Yeah. Pretty sweet. And uh, oh, it was great, Danny. I got to travel the world during that period of time and see places that I would normally never be able to have afforded at that time to go and see. And it was great. I was able to travel, see places, and I just brought my books with me. And yeah, get the visual. Like, what's the optics of that, right? I would be sitting there with my textbook and my big yellow legal pads. Yeah. 
and a bag of peanuts. <laughs> And a little, yeah, a little peanuts. And I'm like, hi, can I have that ice cream sundae? Yeah. And I would just be, because they used to serve ice cream sundaes back then, if you remember. Damn, pretty day. great. And I would just be doing all my my longhand formulas. So that was life in college. So what yeah. was, once you started acting full time, it, that was a pretty long run. I didn't realize you had multiple shows going at once. So literally yeah. your schedule is. 22 years. 22 years. 22 years? Yeah, yeah. I was really no, lucky, knock on wood. I really never went without working for for the whole time, for the 22 years. It was That's really remarkable. Great. I didn't realize it was that long. But uh, So in that, in the heat of it, you were doing multiple shows and needing to, day by day, fly to different locations or go to different production yeah. sets. And so what, what was a typical uh, day like? How early on a production set? Or you get well, like Jag. I spent the last like four years of my career on Jag, and um, and that's when I the the final year was when I was pregnant with the twins. But I would be up and on the road uh, by four thirty in the morning to get to Ooh. set. You know, by five yeah. five thirty, and we shot all the way out in Valencia. You know, on the studios yeah. out in Valencia. So I would get out there before the sun came up and get there and get my coffee and and they'd be starting on hair and makeup. And sometimes I'd sit in my trailer for six hours before they'd even yeah. get to me. And so those are pretty long hours. You know, when you do a sitcom, it's the sweetest thing in the world. You go in at eight or nine, you sit there all day and you make each other laugh. You're, you're, you're either in the scene or you're over at craft service eating. Like you're just having fun. It's pretty easy. And yeah. then you shoot in front of a live audience. So it's just a lot of fun. A one hour, like Jag, it's grueling. I mean, it's grueling. We'd have 20 hour days. You know, you're shooting this direction for the whole day. And then you have to turn the whole scene and shoot that way. They don't have the multiple cameras. Uh, so it was really... That was that was grueling, but I would just leave in the middle of the day, and I would take my golf clubs and I would go, <laughs> go shoot around until they called and said, "Cindy, you know, get back to set." And then I would come back. So you make the best of it. Got it. So long, grueling days, uh, yeah. a lot of mental toughness there. So tell me, I'm sure there's tons of crazy stories, but I I know the Seinfeld. You you're sort of on an iconic um, episode of Seinfeld, which. You had a little side role, but it became a huge thing in Seinfeld, and it's obviously very funny and controversial. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what I'm, where I'm getting at? Oh, I know what you're getting. What episode at. is it? I know where you're going with this, Danny Brown. Yeah, so, I, I, you know, my mind is. You know, I, I, I originally, uh, because it was during my term on JAG, and they gave me the role of the woman with the big hands. Do you remember that originally? Yes. That, and Jag wouldn't let me out to do it. I was heavy in story at Jag at the time, and, so, and it was a two episode arc, so they wouldn't let me do it. So I thought, well, there goes my Seinfeld opportunity. Right. But then they called again, and it was the fifth to the last episode of season nine, which was their final season. And Vanity Fair was on the set, and it was a really big deal because it was coming to an end and nobody wanted it to end. But my character, which I know is what you're getting getting to, um, my character, the episode was called The Burning, so Burning. that's telling you something. And it is my Burning episode, Man, not Burning no, Man. No, not Burning oh. Man, which is a whole other story I can tell you about, but The Burning, because my character got gonorrhea from riding her tractor in a bathing suit. That's right. <laughs> that is right. So I have a funny story. Tell I have it. Story. So years later, I am shooting the remake of Love Boat. And we had come in from shooting, and you know Julie Haggerty from all the airplane episodes. She was so brilliant, great comedian, so funny. She and I are sitting in the lounge and we're waiting for the flight from Montego Bay to bring us back home. We just finished the Love Boat. And this local comes up to her and she goes, Oh my God, Mon, oh my God, you're the airplane girl, the airplane girl. And she starts going nuts over Julie. And Julie looks at me, she goes, I am so sick of being called the airplane girl. And then she looks at me and her eyes, she goes, oh, you, you're the gonorrhea girl, the gonorrhea girl. <laughs> That's fantastic. And Julie <laughs> looks at me, she goes, yeah, I'm never going to complain again about being called the airplane girl. Oh it was pretty God. funny. Well, I'm so sure I there's a zillion stories like that. It's so oh, yeah. tell me, uh, when did you and Don meet? How was this during your acting days? Or yeah, it had to be, right? It was before. So crazy thing, I had I had done a an acting showcase 27 years ago. And at the time the woman said to me, she's oh maybe it was like 25 years ago. The woman said to me, she said, if you she said if Eileen Davidson 
ever leaves the Young and the Restless, I'm calling you. You look so much like Eileen Davidson. And I, I didn't watch Young and the Restless. I didn't know who that was. So um, fast forward three months later, she calls. Eileen Davidson was leaving the show. She must have known. And she calls. And I go in to read for Eileen Davidson's role. And at the time, was Don's wife on the show. But I didn't know this. So um, yeah, so I was auditioning. So I was out in the hallway. A lot of the times during auditions, the girls all gather in the lobby together. And I never like to do that. I like to just go and take my own space. And, and I was out in the hall and I was just writing my lines and envisioning my scenes and kind of just getting into it and just really playing it out and seeing it. And uh, out comes Don walking down the hall and he kind of stops. He goes, hi. I said, hi. I didn't know he was. And he leaves and he comes back and he says, are you auditioning? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, that's it. See you then. And he goes in. I have no idea who he is. And I'm in there. I'm really, I'm out in the hall, still really working on my stuff. And they call my name and I go in and mind you, they'd seen about 500 girls. This is, this has been going on for days. So I go in, I'm not even kidding, probably more for this role. And I go in and the door opens and um, it's, Bill Bell Sr. and Ed Scott. And then sure enough, there's Donald. And they're like, and this is Donald. You'll be doing your scenes with him. And I, I was like this immediately when I met him, my heart was like this. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> and I knew I was going to lose focus. I knew that was that cute guy in the hall. And then I saw him. I was like, oh, shit. Like it just, I knew it was going to distract me. But uh, I ended up screen testing. It came down to three of us and I screen tested. And at the same time, I got a show with Jim Burroughs called um, Men Behaving Badly. And it was a primetime show, and I ended up doing that. But that's how we originally met. That's how you cross paths. So how I'm going to transition us into you know, Cindy that, that we know today. So I do know from knowing you so well that during your acting career, you started investing in real estate and doing deals and thinking long term. So you had some experience and had the real estate bug, but what made the, what made the big transition from that? Cause a lot of people dabble in investing to saying, you know what, I'm going to start a new career uh, and real estate being a real estate broker on the West side. Uh, as you know, if you're going to really do it and not part-time it, it's right. a 24 seven gig. So tell me how right. that came about that transition, what it was like for you. Well, like you said, I mean, when I would get studio bonuses back then, it was a little different. You know, I would sign a show like for Sony or um, Fox and I would get a nice bonus. I would take that bonus and I would buy a condo or a little house or an apartment building. And my co-stars were all buying like jet skis and boats and I was investing in real estate. So I kind of just had a knack for it. Um, I just loved it, you know, and it was, it was a passionate hobby of mine while I was acting and taking the money and then putting it into real estate. I really loved it. I enjoyed yeah. it. I love the strategy behind it and the mindset behind it. And how can I coming again from, from nothing? I mean, not nothing, I have a dirt floor in my hut of a house, but I mean, a cop and a housewife, you know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So for me, it's like, how can I make my money work for me? And I really started investing in real estate and realizing I can play a little game of Monopoly. Like if I buy a property, let that equity build up, I can pull from that to then buy another one. And then I can pull from that and buy another one. So I really started to see how that was a great way to get ahead, make California real estate my friend and work for me. And I believe in it. So when I left JAG because I wanted to be home with the twins, I was delivering the twins and so that, and uh, yeah, so I was on JAG until I, I mean, I was out to here nine months pregnant and I was, and I delivered them. And the next, there's a point to this story. Um, the next morning, literally I had the phone and I had one twin here and one twin here. And I have Les Moonves and Dom Belsario on the phone and I'm crying, let me out of my contract. Cause I just, once I held them, it's like, I didn't want to miss it. that. So I had to come back for like three months to type my storyline and I was with them and it was brilliant because I got to be there 24 seven with them. And then I thought, well, let's, what can I do? And I thought, I love real estate. I just love it so much. And that will allow me to work my own hours. <laughs> so I thought, so I thought, yeah. um, but yeah. I did it, but that was my transition. I thought I could do real estate and be present for my children. And it would allow me to, um, 
you know, navigate my own schedule. So I could put them first always. They always come first, even now with as busy as we are. Um, they always come first, period. They are my priority. And yeah. real estate then has allowed me to do my best to manage both schedules. So that was really the transition is to be able to be home with my kids. And, and, I, and I love it. I, I sell and do for a living what I truly believe in. Like I love California real estate. It is amazing. You were so smart to do that. So that makes sense. So you had the kids, you became a mother and it was like, okay, need to shift. So let's now give people a taste of what it's like to be one of the top brokers in the country, a mother, uh, a wife, and, uh, and I'll call this, I'll call it a sports mom. Uh, a sports mom, sports mom is sort of the advanced level of a soccer mom. Uh, but look, Cindy and I have known each other in a lot of different ways. And what people probably don't know is we've bonded a lot on the fact that her boys are, your boys are major, major jocks and athletes. And I don't mean jocks, literally, I mean professional level athletes. Mm -hmm. and that entails a whole different set of time and mental toughness and scheduling because I went through that, you know, for 15 years as well. You. So it's a full time thing as the kid and the parent. So now you got. The sports mom 24-7, big brokerage business 24-7, and then managing family and Don and his whole huge career. Yeah. So let's yeah. give an example of like, you had mentioned we were laughing about it this past year. We had, uh, it was like the city championship or the Southern California yeah. basketball yeah. championship. Yeah. City and city. I show up, I come because I love, I'm living through your kids now with football or basketball because I get to relive it. So let's just give people a sample of like, what, what's your typical, typical day? Hey, Jess. Hey, Jess. Can you tell the gardener to stop cutting for like 20 minutes? <laughs> yes, uh, I told you. <laughs> Welcome to live TV. This is live, baby. It's live, live, baby. Live with Danny Brown. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, nobody would understand. You would actually have to follow me from morning until night to even kind of comprehend what goes on here, right. but it's insanity. Like I get up early before anybody else. Um, I get up early. I pack their, hey, Jessica. I pack their, um, their lunches because I'm still kind of an old school mom. You know, I like, we get everything organic and we feed our kids well. So we go from feast to famine in our house with four refrigerators and they're empty after two days. So we're back to the store and then they're empty after two days and we're back to the store. But I get up really early and they all get, you know, handmade sandwiches and, and fresh fruit and whatever we do. And it, I pack their lunches for them. They also get breakfast, do all that before. And then usually I have my phone propped up. So while I'm making kids lunches, kids that are 17, but still they're my babies, um, making them lunches, I usually have somebody on the phone who also is up at the crack of dawn, a client who I'm talking about real estate, we're negotiating, we're hammering it out while I'm spreading you know, on the sandwiches. So it's just about a lot of multitasking. Um, and I think the trick to it, you know, Danny, it's kind of funny. I spoke recently at Inman and it was all about juggling it all and whether it's for men or for women, because especially now with COVID, a lot of men are Mr. Moms because they're also home now with the kids. Right. So kudos to you because you're taking, you guys are all taking on a whole new responsibility as well and a whole new respect for it. But I spoke at Inman about, right. I spoke to Inman about having it all. Can you really have it all? And it was really amazing because at first, um, the first day I sat at a table with eight women, some of them in their 20s, unmarried, no kids, some of them older who had kids still in high school, some who kids had, had graduated and had moved on and married and now their grandmother, grandmothers. So it was really about, is there any such thing as having it all? And they all went, God, that expectation is too much. That expectation that somebody can do it all, it's just, it's too much. And what does that really even mean? It means just do your best. It means do your best and prioritize and more than anything, try to find balance. So that's really um, what I live by. And I really think that's been a key to my success professionally as well as, and most importantly, personally, um, is finding that balance. It's really, I am a super organized person. I don't know if you watch Friends, but my husband calls me Monica. Okay. I don't know if that's a compliment. I don't think it is, but um, I think it is. 
I, I don't know that it is, but I'm super organized and I have to be because to be able to be a working mom and a working dad and um, be present for your kids. I know, Danny, that I've seen, I've been on the phone with you while you're driving to practices or driving to parks and driving here and driving there. We all, I know because you're a super great hands-on dad. We are trying to find that balance and we're trying to juggle it all and do it well. Um, and I think it's just a lot of pressure on us and I think it's about time management. So I have a calendar and my calendar in one color is everything that's personal and the other color is everything that's professional. And my assistant knows if she sees anything personal in there, anything professional has to get worked around that. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then what ends up happening is like one is green and one is blue, right? Green is professional, blue is personal. So if all of a sudden it's all green, I know I'm not giving enough time to my kids and my husband. If it's all blue, I'm, you know, I have to, I like to look at the calendar and see the balance of the two colors. And it also keeps me from starting to get worn out that I'm, I'm not being where I'm supposed to be. I'm not handling it the way I'm supposed to be handling it by actually seeing it visually and having it on my calendar and seeing that I have balance, I feel better. Yeah, I mean, that's balance. It, we all talk right. about balance when you're at a certain level with family and career. And it's, yeah. really, it's a really hard thing. I always say, you're never really perfectly in balance. You're just recalibrating to try to get to some sort of balance. And yeah. you're constantly recalibrating and checking to try to do it all. And it, it's impossible that you do the best you can. And it's it impossible, needs... so don't expect it. Like, right, don't, it, don't set yourself up that you have to have perfect balance in your life. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's, it, it, and then you're putting that pressure, that's just one more thing you're, you're stressing about is putting the pressure on you to have perfect balance. You just have to do your best and prioritize. You know, my priority, as I said, my family. So that's my priority. And then everything else falls in a, you know, right in line, you know, hugging it. But if you have a priority and that's your focus, you feel better, you're happier. If you know you're tending to your priority or, you know, and then literally I'm better, I'm better at work when I know that my priority is in order. My kids and my house are in order, then I'm much better at work. If I feel like, ah, I'm not doing what I need to be doing here and, and things need to be taken care of here. It's going to affect my work. Sure, it all bleeds. In it the does. So you have to take totally. care of the age. Though I don't want to paint a picture of that, you know, that this is a perfect, perfect balance and it's all family because I know you and I've seen many times where you've had to leave important events. Like I was saying I earlier, you're at Cali High City Championship yeah. or State Championship Basketball. So you and I, and thank you so much, Dan. Tell us what happened. Okay, so Danny, by the way, everybody out there is the greatest friend because my son was playing, he plays basketball at Pally High. He's a 6'10 ball player. And at 17, he's 6'10. It's crazy, still growing. And Danny came to all the games for the city championship. So you're such a good friend. I so appreciate wow. the support. And I'll by the way, I get to relive it. I love it. Well, it was 110 in the gym. And everyone was, oh, God, how do I make that stop? Sorry, guys. 110 in the gym, and you still showed up. So did Jess, by the way. I appreciate it. So, Hello? I think you picked up the phone. I meant to say end, and I answered it. Sorry. So it might <laughs> happen again. We're live. <laughs> How do we make that not happen during our call? You turn off the phone, maybe? I don't know. Turn on volume. Turn on. I don't, I don't know. know. Turn off volume. But it, it's okay. Let me try and do that. So anyway, so um, so Danny was so great. And you came to to the games, and this was a huge deal. It was the first time in fifty years, Pally had gone to uh, the championship. Yeah, you so know, so great. But this is a perfect example. I've been working all day, running around like crazy. I have to get home. I need to get dressed for an evening event, then get to the game two hours ahead if you remember because that was when lebron wow. came that's right and they all came to watch it and so the stadium was packed and we had to get in there it's here at canyon it was against lebron's yeah. son it was like a full media the whole oh world. my god 400 people waiting wow. outside to get in that's and awesome. by the way everyone this was the week before covid yeah and we thought we got this all in and they end up winning that that thursday they end up winning, or there was a Saturday they won, and the following Monday, everything was shut down. So we just squeezed it in in time. But the point is, I'm there, 
I'm at the game. I'm cheering on my son. I'm going nuts. We're going crazy. The game, we're going to win. We're going to win. And then I'm looking. I have 200 people arriving at my Bristol listing for my big Twilight Sushi event. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I can be here for about 12 more minutes. And right. then that'll give me time to get to the car. And then I can drive and I can change my heels in the car, maybe brush my hair. I'll have about about six minutes when I get there to make sure I can brush my hair before all the guests start to come. Or a quarter of the championship game. Or a quarter of the championship. So while I should be like focusing on, I have, you know, 200, maybe 250 people coming to this event with a jazz band and sushi and ballet and the whole bit. I'm calling you and I'm calling my husband going, what's happening today? What's the score? What's happening? And then, and then Alexa, my assistant at the time is calling out. I'm like, Alexa, so did the tables arrive? Are the flowers there? Them hanging up. What's the score? I mean, this is what we do all the time and it's it. just nuts. So I'm that's asking what that looks like, huh? That's what, that's, that's what it looks like. And yeah. I'm at the event, and while I'm at the event, all of a sudden I'm nowhere, I'm screaming, and people are looking at me and saying, oh, sorry, Pally just scored. No, <laughs> so we're just, you know, we're just, we're in it. We're in that it, is, we're doing our best. Perfect summary of like that little microcosm of, of what you go through when you are trying to balance family, personal, business, me, and coming at you. These are hats. And you pivot and you focus, you pivot and you focus. And it's such a hard skill, but it's a learned skill. And it's something I think, um, you know, many people on a successful level have to have to learn and have to cultivate. So it's, it's very impressive. We wear a lot of hats. But that was my, that was what I was doing there. We're wearing a lot of hats and we're, you know, we're doing it. We need to uh, be forgiving of ourselves too, because there was a lot of guilt with me leaving that game. Right. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I believe, but at the same time, I have sellers who hired me. I have a responsibility. I have, you know, um, a duty to them as well. And they have entrusted their, you know, at the time, 14, nine home in right. my hands. And so, yeah, that I was better raised, know. Is that raised house? No. Bristol no, that was AMG. AMG, yeah. AMG Capital. They're amazing. And so we end up selling that at uh, 12 million, 10 clothes. Nice. It was really great, really great buyer. But it was just, you know, we have a lot of responsibilities. So I have responsibilities to the kids and my husband. Oh. But boy, Danny, you know, our our clients, we're responsible. Yeah, they don't care you know, that you have seven sons and a husband to take care of. They don't care that the city championship they you got to get their house sold and you're representing them. And I get and it. I could better have a really killer event that night that, yeah. you know, the home is, and, and it was, it was, it was amazing. But it's just really being able to take a deep breath and say, I got this. I can do this. And let me, like you said perfectly, pivot here. I'm focused here. And when I'm here, my attention is here and it's focused. But it's, it's a really you, know, hard skill. It, you can't always do it all of it. You just do your best. Well, something that comes to mind with me, uh, with you, and with a lot of successful people, and it's on the back of juggling multiple things that you need to be accountable for is the energy it takes both mental and physical. Yeah. And I'd love to talk to you a little bit about uh, your, your routines, your health routines, your diet, your exercise, your meditation. Cause I know that is a big part of being able to maximize your and optimize your energy and focus. So tell me a little bit about that and how you, you know, go about that. Well, I can probably say it's probably of late my weaker, you know, so it's fair to talk about this too. You know, I have, I have a lot of people who are in the best shape of their lives during COVID because they have all the time in the world to work out. Yeah. We as agents, have, I, we've been busier than ever and, and it's been harder than ever. So um, I have not been hitting the gym or working out as much as I would like. And I feel the difference. I definitely feel the difference. I am passing out at night. I'm exhausted. Where when I do, even if it's three times a week, just get on. We have a full gym in the house for Donald and the boys. Imagine, I mean, they're, as you mentioned, they're terrific athletes and they're division one athletes. They're up there training four nights a week, even after they've worked out with their teams. Yeah. Then they're up there working out in our gym we have. So, you know, I should be up there three nights a week, at least doing the elliptical and yeah. at least doing some weights, you know, it really, really helps. But um, I'm, I've gotten better about it as of this week because I did notice a difference in my energy. I've gotten better about it this week. And 
but more than anything, we eat really well. Like I eat really well. So I'm really big on you are what you eat. Um, and we've talked about this. Like I do a lot of you know, I really love a Thorn product. Thorn has like no metals in it and it's really, really high in all the nutritional values. And I'll put that in a shake every morning and drink that. It's called, that, what is it called, Cindy? Um, I, I now should be a sponsor endorsing this product. It's called yeah. Thorn, T-H-O-R-N-E. I think there's an E on the end of it. It's a Aramon, What is it? Is it a supplement? Erewhon is the only one that carries, the Whole Foods carries some, some of it, but Erewhon, and I highly recommend it to everybody because if I have a, a client of mine who I adore and he has, he was on the stock market, but really what all he did was investments on health products. Well, he's really done his homework on oops, products that have high metals, high this and high that. So he's the one who recommended it to us years ago and I love it. And I'll put a, put a big scoop of it in powder, like, it's like a, a powder and it's loaded with, I mean everything, but it doesn't have the metals and it doesn't have all of the toxins in it. And it's just, it's really, really um, good for you. It's energizing, but not, but all in the right ways. You know what I mean? So I put that in a shake in the morning and I drink that. Uh, we also do everything organic, you know, from the meats that we eat, you know, everything is, is pretty clean. I'm, I'm really big about balance. You know, so if I'm going to have a dessert tonight, I won't have one tomorrow night. If I'm going to have a glass of wine tonight, I probably won't have one tomorrow night. Like I just, try to, I just try to balance it. And, um, you know, for me, it's, it's, I have, you know, I'm no spring chicken and I really want to be here for years ahead for my kids. I want to see my grandkids, you know, for me, it's about what do I need to do? And this business can really stress you out. You know, we run ourselves into the ground. We really, really do. So if we don't also take care of ourselves and what we put into our body and what we're, what we're doing. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a dangerous direction. So I believe in, in working really hard and playing really hard. Um, I don't do anything, you know, a half ass, hence the seven children. Um, but I mean, we just, we really take our health seriously as far as what, you know, what foods we eat. And I have air filters in the house. I have an air filter in my car because the we're in our car all the time right yep. so think about the exhaust yep. that we're inhaling I the jet that. fuel that we're inhaling so there are these little filters made by nasa like 150 dollars uh, little kit you plug it into your cigarette lighter, oh, plug it in your cigarette lighter it actually takes in all of the exhaust the jet fuel the pollution the smog out wow. because we're in our car and we're inhaling that all yeah. day so those are just things that you don't realize. It's like on the seat or the console? It's yeah, small. it's in my back seat. It's in my back seat. I have it plugged into the cigarette lighter in the back seat. And it's just a little white thing and it just lights up and, and it's remarkable. I mean, it's absolutely remarkable the difference that it makes in the air quality. So, you know, as you know, Danny, because you went through it with me, um, I lost my mom three years ago to cholangiocarcinoma. And cholangiocarcinoma is 100% environmental. So if that doesn't tell you the importance of the food that you eat, the air that you breathe, that you know, yeah, it's not stress. It's not that it's environmental. And so it's just something get that filter. get the filter, but it's, those are things that help you with your energy levels, you know, and we have a, we have a lot of responsibility and we're fielding calls all day and we've got to be sharp because, you know, in LA, as you know, in LA real estate, I see. most of our clients are so sophisticated. They know as much about, a property in the property history as we do because it's all at their fingertip and they've done their work and so you really have to be sharp you have to know the inventory you have to know the product you have to know the market you you know you've got to be sharp so i i truly believe um diet and calm mindset is so helpful and um, do you do any breathing meditation or anything to calm or read it like how do you stay calm focused and and is rest play a part of it are you sleeping I'm or a big or not? believer in sleep is so important it's like what i tell my sons you know um recovery is a huge part of their success right. and you so it's huge, you know, as you know davis was injured last year with his knees right. and it's because he kept working 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 and he never rested and he did cartilage damage which is thank god better now and he's back to being on the court but um, rest is hugely important. And there are times at night where 
my God, with everything, you know, you're just going, ah, oh, this is a lot. And how do I fix these problems with work? And how do I, you know, cause we are problem solvers in real estate, right? And we're problem solvers as parents. Yeah. Put the puzzle pieces together somehow. Yeah. And I just know that if it's at night and I'm feeling like, wow, then I just turn the computer off. I go to bed in the morning. Oh, it's so much clearer. And I can just take it on. I feel much better about it. So you're I allow you're myself. Rest, you're making yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm a good. If I can get seven hours a night, like that's a lot. That's it. That's all you need. Oh, I'm great if I can get that. Yeah, yeah. I need more. I need a good eight. If I can get eight, I'm good. I used to need more. As you get older, I'm telling you, you don't need as much. You know what? Know mine, is so, mine is so interrupted. We have someone popping in at every, you know. Two, three times a night, the dog, the kid, the, 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 it's like, ah, uh, it doesn't feel. I remember but, that. But uh, yeah, I think rest is so important. So I, you've been very generous for your time, but before we wrap it up, I'd love to get some feedback or your advice on like what, now knowing what you know, uh, what would you, what advice would you give to your younger self or to, you know, I think important for younger women to know that we're in this world where women have huge careers and they want families and they, they want to have it all. You touched on it before, but what would your advice be to your 25 year old self or to a young woman who's in the professional world, who's at, you know, wants to be at the peak of the game and wants to, a family. Like, what, what would you say to that? I think that's really important for people to hear. Well, I think what I would, Ooh, it's such a loaded question, Danny. Um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good though, and it should be talked about. This should be a whole other. This is a whole thing. Show. I mean, this could go. It really well. should be a whole other show. Um, it it really should be because it's big, you know. It's it's big, and mm -hmm. the expectations on young girls, you know, in their twenties. Why aren't you married yet? Why don't you have a family yet? Right. You know that. Well, I don't want to feel guilty for wanting a career. You know, I don't want to feel good. You know, so I think there and women are still even, you know, in this day and age are still expected by a certain age. You should be married. You should have children. You should. And then women put off their career or they feel guilty having a career and putting off marriage. Um, what I truly, truly advise women to do, young girls, please take the time to yourself to ask yourself what you want. It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks you should have. Doesn't matter what everyone else thinks you should be. Um, doesn't matter what everyone, how everyone else thinks you should do it. Yeah. You need to just stop, take the time, and ask yourself, what do I want? What makes me tick? When am I my happiest? When do I find that I'm my calmest and I'm the most peaceful with myself? And it doesn't matter what anyone else says, expects, tells you should do or advise you it doesn't it doesn't matter you have to have your own voice and you have to hear your own voice and ask yourself what do you want and that should be your focus what you want is going to change as you get older you're going to now go okay i have this now i'd like this let it happen organically for yourself but it's but don't be dictated to um it'll throw you off It'll throw you off for years. That's such good advice, Cindy. I, I mean, hope so. That's good advice for any young person, but it is, it, to focus on the woman's perspective, I think that's huge. you got to turn in for the answers, not out. There's so many out exterior Everyone's practices. willing to give it to you. Everyone wants to give you yeah. their opinion. Including, Everyone wants to tell you what you should do. Including the people that love you and have your best interests oh, in sure. mind. They're giving you their views, their views. You know, you sure. got all of us, women and men, all of have to look inside and figure out what who am i what do i want there's no expectation you don't have to have a career you don't have to have a family it, you no. have to figure it out and a huge thing that i want to touch on and shine a light on as you just said it will change and evolve and that's okay sure. you sure. don't have to say this is what i made this commitment and that's it i'm stuck no it life changes you grow things grow, and you, you oh yeah with it look i i was on a top 10 tv series we were a top 10 series for 10 years and we went 11 seasons. I left on the 10th season because my life changed. And I, I held my babies for the first time and said, I'm not missing this. I'm not having someone else raise my kids. I'm going to be home with them. And let, so all of a sudden I had a shift. I didn't think twice after driving off that lot the last day. didn't think twice about it. It was the right decision for me at that time. And no one else, people are like, you're crazy. You're leaving a top 10 show. You're I didn't care what anyone thought. I knew for me 
the most important thing was being there 24 seven for my babies. So everyone's different. There's no right or wrong. It's only wrong if you're not doing what's what you know is best for you because yes. you're listening to all the noise. That is fantastic. Well, that's awesome. Anything else you want to leave us with? That was so cool and such great advice. No, yeah, I guess I'm so happy we finally got to do this. I I'm so happy it. that Cindy Ambul on season three of The Deal blowing it up. You can find Cindy uh, on Instagram. I'll, I'll put all her information down in the intro. But Cindy, love you. Thank you. Say hi I to, to Don. I can't will. wait for the next season. Let's hope we have a, a season next year at Pally High. We can't wait. <laughs> Uh, we're supposed to, so fingers crossed. Awesome. Talk to you soon, Cindy. Thanks, Danny. Uh, hey, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed Cindy Amdul on The Deal Season 3. You could always check us out at thedealpod.com. We're on Spotify, Apple, uh, and everywhere you consume podcasts. You can find me at The Deal Pod on Instagram. Uh, my personal handle is at Danny Brown LA. We have a lot of cool guests coming up this season. Go back and watch the other guests that we had on. We had some professional athletes. We had the head of the CIA. We had a major cannabis doctor. We've had so many cool, interesting guests. So make sure you go through our catalog. Leave a comment if you like what you hear. Give us a five-star review. Thank you very much. Hope you're all safe. Peace out.